Okay guys, everyone loves fried fish, right? I mean, what's not to love about a big mess of fried fish? Well, we've got these bluegills right here that we caught with Nathan Zelensky, and we're gonna fry them all right, but we're gonna fry them a lot different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a coconut fried fish. And so, as with any other fry process, we're gonna do it in two steps. First, we'll do all of our coating, and then we'll come back and then put them in the Dutch oven with the, with the uh, grease in it and fry them off. These bluegills were filleted, they were chilled, they've been trimmed, and now they're perfect and ready to go, patted dry and ready to go. All right, so the first step in the fry process is, of course, the breading. Fish needs to be very, very dry. This is straight cornstarch, so I'm gonna take these little pieces of bluegill right into the cornstarch. I'll put a couple in at a time, and we'll do this in three steps. So first, a little bit of cornstarch, shake all the extra off into the egg wash, shake all the extra off, and then into the panko the panko, coconut, and coconut flour. Again, shake all the extra off right onto the tray. We're gonna do this for all of these in this order. The cornstarch will help the batter basically adhere. And so we'll do them in this order. We'll give them a little pat and we'll keep them all separate on here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go stick them back in the fridge and let them chill down while the oil heats up. What's really unique about this particular dish is it's basically a one-third, one-third, one-third of panko coconut flour and shredded coconut. So it's got a distinct sweetness to it. And to counteract some of that sweetness, all good cooks know that you need balance. Well, I put a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of cayenne pepper in that mixture as well to give a tiny little bit of, of, of heat to it. Just a tiny little bit of heat, not a lot, just enough to really let you know that it's sweet and hot all at the same time, and it should be excellent. So there you have it. So now I'm gonna run in, I'll wash my hands, I'll put these in the fridge and let them kind of firm back up a little bit, and then we'll come back and throw them in the fryer. So overall, what you're looking at is the whole Somerset 4 stove. You may have seen this on other Fishful Thinker episodes before. It's my home stove. I roll it around here on top of my deck. The beauty of it is it's 30,000 BTUs at each burner, and there's four of them, so I can generate some serious power. I'm heating up oil. It's only over medium heat right now. If I wanted to fry a whole turkey, I have enough power in this stove to do that as well. It's got a detachable grill that can sit right here, a regular grill with cast iron grills on it that you can cook like that. And it's got a traditional griddle system, which is extremely heavy gauge that just sits on here and you can move it around as well. So I can use traditional pots, I can use a, a griddle surface like this, I can use a grill box or even a pizza oven that's designed to sit on here. So it's very versatile. And as you see, there's not a grill on my deck anymore. This Somerset stove right here is taken over from my traditional grill. So we've got the grill box, the griddle, traditional pots and pans, or Dutch ovens with feet or a pizza oven. Such a versatile tool and a great way to enhance your deck or patio. The oil's heating up in here at this point now. This is a 12 inch cast iron Dutch oven here. This Camp Chef oven. This happens to be the Mule Deer edition. We got Mule Deer all around us actually right now, so it somehow seems appropriate. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this oil hot. I want in the 350 to 400 degree range. I'm not really one for thermometers. When it sizzles, when I put a little bit of water in there, I'll assume it's done. But the key is don't put your fish in there until your oil's all the way hot and don't burn your oil either. Don't get it too hot. So there's a fine line in there. So let's go in and get it done. We'll start with the little guys. And as you see, they're going to fry very quickly. And you don't want them to touch. So I'm gonna put them in there as far apart as I can. I'll do about half of them. And then we'll do all these big pieces separately. It's really important that whenever you're doing this, that you make sure that your fish is consistent in size if possible. Otherwise, they won't fry as evenly as you'd like them to fry. So I always make sure the fish is cut in even sizes. If one fish was bigger than the other, which is the case of these, then we cut the fillets down to make them match in size. And these are gonna flow. I mean, this is literally gonna take just a minute or two. The coconut flour is gonna brown really quickly. And then we've got the heat down low here. I don't want that oil any hotter than that. That's plenty hot. All right, so I'm going to go in with these bigger ones now because there's plenty of heat and plenty of room in there. And then we'll take the ones that are done out. Notice I'm using very long tongs for this. I'm going to put them right on here. And as soon as I get these ones that are done out, Look at the color on them. I mean, they smell good already. As soon as I get the first wave of them out of here, then we'll go ahead and salt them real quick and let the second wave finish up. 
and set these down and just a tiny little pinch of salt just a little bit not a lot just a little bit and we'll set these aside for just a minute the dipping sauce is a key component of this whole dish right here and it's because it adds a really distinct island flavor to it it's basically comprised of about a half a cup of sour cream, about a quarter of a cup of pina colada mix, like you would find non-alcoholic pina colada mix. Uh, we add that to it. We add maybe a quarter of a cup of crushed pineapple, and then a little bit of uh, a pinch, pinch of salt, and then a little bit of flaked coconut as well. That's all there is to it, and you can see it's really thick and robust. I put it in the fridge and let it chill for a couple hours and let the flavors all come together. Very, very simple, makes an excellent, excellent dipping sauce for this coconut fish. Let's get the fish out of the east. All right, so these guys are done. We'll pull these ones off and we'll salt them as well real quick. And then we'll plate them up and let you know how they taste. But I can tell you right now, I've made this one before and it's absolutely delicious. You're gonna have coconut fish. It seems like you might as well have you a nice beer to go with it. So we're gonna try one out. A little bluegill right here. Thanks Mr. Zelensky for helping us with that. Coconut dipping sauce, not too much, just a little bit of it. Mmm, a little bluegill, so simple to catch, so much fun to catch, so simple to cook, and by barely changing up your recipe to something slightly different, it makes it a lot more interesting and appealing than just a traditional fried, fried fish. So thanks, Nathan, these are delicious. Outdoor cooking, it's, it's just, you can't possibly overrate it. It's so much fun to cook outside and be outside and be on the patio and enjoy the weather and things like that. I got one more piece of bluegill right here, which I'm gonna eat, that we just fried out here. My house doesn't smell. So check out campchef.com. Check out the stoves. Check out the portable stoves for tailgating. Check out all their cast iron, fire pits, and all kinds of stuff. Check them out at campchef.com, and we appreciate you guys watching. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm.